180 hertz refresh rate, 5K displays, 200 degree field of view. Yeah, we gotta talk about something. time I finally have a chance to look at a Pimax VR headset on this channel. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, we gotta talk. Because as a hardcore PC VR and Valve Index user, I am seriously questioning whether I even want to go back to a Valve Index after using this headset. So today, I'm going to be taking a serious deep dive into the Pimax 5K Super, which is the headset Pimax sent over. I wasn't able to get an Artisan, which is the cheaper direct index competitor, or an 8KX, which is currently Pimax's top-the-line headset set or any of the other 20 headsets that Pimax has announced in the past two years, but this headset is probably the one that I would use personally anyways if I were to daily drive a Pimax. But that's the question. As a Valve Index user, would I or will I be daily driving a Pimax? Am I making the switch? I think we'll find out in this video, but if there's one thing that I do daily drive, it's audiobooks. And here's one I think you might really like. He was the video game designer responsible for creating the Oasis, a massively multiplayer online game that had gradually evolved into the globally networked virtual reality most of humanity now used on a daily basis. Yeah, that's a clip from probably my favorite audiobook of all time, Ready Player One, voiced by Will Wheaton, one of my favorite voice actors of all time, so it kind of works out for an amazing virtual reality sci-fi experience. And this video is brought to you by Audible, the place where you can listen to audiobooks like Ready Player One and the new sequel Ready Player Two. And gaining access to the largest audiobook catalog on the planet is pretty easy too. If you visit audible.com thrill or text thrill to 500-500, you can try Audible completely free and get a free audiobook that you can keep forever. Audible has thousands of audiobooks with some incredible voice talent and it's a service that I've grown to really enjoy and have ingrained into my daily life. So what are you waiting for? For. Delve into the exhilarating story of Parzival in Ready Player One as he fights through the Oasis with Audible. Audible.com slash thrill to try your free trial. I think it's fair to start off this video with a small introduction explaining Pimax and their backstory just a little bit. A lot of people, even VR enthusiasts, don't really know much about Pimax. They're a small China-based company with expensive VR headsets that aren't really sold anywhere besides their own store. This isn't the type of headset that you'll see in a Best Buy is what I mean. And they make up a very small percentage of overall VR users on Steam. Now I could get into why this is the way it is, but I think it's better suited for a video on its own because the story is pretty convoluted and beefy to say the least. Long story short, Pimax started as a crowdfunding company selling super advanced VR headsets, and as we've seen over and over again, Kickstarter and crowdfunding can be a recipe for disaster. And Pimax is no different. Year-long delays, bad customer service, missed crowdfunding goals, it was messy. But Pimax has turned themselves around for the most part over the past year, making true on their 8KX promises, which have been on hold for almost two years now. They've bumped up the quality of many manufacturing and focused on following through on those early promises that were made years ago. So it seems like they're on the right track, but let's just talk about the headset. Just to get some very basics out of the way, Pimax headsets are Steam VR tracked and PC VR only, meaning you'll need both a PC and base stations to use a Pimax, but this also means that tracking is pretty great as long as you have your base station set up correctly, and using something like Valve Index controllers or full body tracking is extremely easy. But also beware that unless you buy the far more expensive full kit, the $750 that this headset costs is only for the headset itself. You'll have to buy base stations and controllers on your own, which to be fair, does put the Pimax 5K Super in a right position to be an upgrade headset if you already have those things, but what makes this headset special? Why would you even think about upgrading? And I think we should look at the biggest killer feature right away, the thing that Pimax loves to stick right next to the 5K Super name, and that's the 180Hz refresh rate. What's not seen most places is that this is very much so just an experimental feature. Let me explain. Why would you buy a Pimax? Well, for most people, it's the wide field of view. If you're new
new to Pimax headsets, generally the biggest distinguishing feature is the extra wide field of view. You can just see more with a Pimax than other headsets. And that's also what gives it its distinct hammerhead shark look. But there's a conflict. Look, it's hard to find listed, but if you decide to run your Pimax at the advertised 180 Hz, your FOV is cropped to just barely larger than something like the Valve Index, and it's only set in one place, way down here on their website. It's a little disappointing, and not gonna lie, I have an RTX 3090 and a Ryzen 9 5950X, and I was struggling to hit 180 FPS consistently in most of the games I was playing. So pretty much what I'm saying here is I'm not using this 180 Hertz mode. Maybe it's useful for something like Beat Saber or Pavlov, but in those simpler games, I would rather take the way better field of view than the 60 Hertz higher refresh rate that I'm only hitting half the time. At least right now, I wouldn't consider 180 Hertz to be all that super usable of a selling point. Not that it's not a selling point, it's just, just there are some pretty hefty trade-offs. But like I said earlier, for right now, 180 Hertz is not how I run the Pimax, and it's not the reason I've been using the Pimax over my index either. The field of view is. Cutting the refresh rate down to 120 Hertz, which is still above industry standard, allows me to actually use the Pimax's wide field of view. And the best way I could explain it is it just allows you to see so much more of the game. In my opinion, it's absolutely a more immersive experience. There's no questions about it. And after using the Pimax pretty extensively, I also realized that field of view needs to be a higher priority for the VR industry as a whole ASAP. The difference between playing a game on this versus something as narrow as a Rift S that has literally half of the FOV of this headset feels kind of laughable and weird. Yet that's how most people are experiencing VR, and this is what it could be. But of course, there's a glaring downside, and that's lens distortion. And I'll be first to tell you, there is heavy distortion on the outside of the lenses. There's no getting around it, and it's unfortunately really difficult to actually show what the distortion looks like on screen, so I'll try my hardest to recreate it. If this is what a typical view would look like with an Index or a Quest 2, this is pretty much what you'd get with a 5K Super. Field of view is massively superior, but there is clear distortion along the outside of the lenses. It's pretty noticeable, and it's kind of weird at first, and I thought I kind of hated it, then I spent about 5 minutes with the headset on, and it disappeared. I mean, not actually disappeared, I just stopped noticing it. It. Just like how I stopped noticing the black edges around every other headset. And this is really the best counter argument for the distortion that a headset like a Pimax would have. Would you rather see nothing slash black bars around everything, or would you rather see more of the game, although distorted on the edges? And after using both, I feel very confident in saying I enjoy the wider field of view. And I don't mind the distortion much, you've gotten used to it by now. It makes every game I play, from VR Chat to Boneworks, feel more open and less claustrophobic. And while the advertised 200 degrees field of view is uh, stretching the facts a little bit, it does make VR games more immersive. And at this point, it may sound like I'm giving the 5K Super a pretty positive review. But realize the only two things I've talked about so far is the super impressive 180Hz refresh rate and the ultra wide field of view. However, those are the actual two selling points that Pimax uses everywhere, so of course they're going to be good. But we all know there's a lot more to a VR headset set than just the displays and lenses. And this is where Pimax gets interesting. Some of it's actually pretty bad, which is very unfortunate, and it seriously stops me from being able to openly recommend a headset like this to just anyone, because I seriously believe that while this headset is a good headset, it's just not for everyone. The Pimax needs fiddling. It's for fiddly people that like to wrench on things, whether that be physically or digitally. If an Oculus Quest 2 is for the type of person that owns a car but doesn't know the make and model of it, Something like a Pimax is for the kind of person that changes their own car oil and tells everyone about it, if that makes any sense. So we've heard what's good, but what is bad about the Pimax 5K Super? Well, as I mentioned earlier, this headset is not 5K. This whole marketing stunt of calling your headset 5K or 8K or even 4K is absolute bullshit, and the industry really needs to kind of stop. It's only hurting them. Putting two 4K panels in your headset should not make it an 8K headset, but it's not just just Pimax, it's a lot of companies, and they get away with it. And the resolution isn't bad, it's 2560 by 1440 per eye, which is not bad by any means, it looks fine, but it's not 5K. And in terms of how good those panels look, well, 200 degrees of field of view is a long way to stretch the pixels of two 2560 by 1440 panels. And the end result of how good everything actually looks is somewhere around the Valve Index level. Maybe slightly less clear in my opinion, but others will say it's around the same or slightly better 
better or slightly worse. It hasn't bothered me using the Pimax being an index user. I'm able to read text just fine, contrast levels are what you'd expect from an LCD panel, and the screen door effect is hardly noticeable. The biggest effect I noticed was more aliasing than normal, so maybe a little more jaggedy edges than some other headsets, but this can be slightly adjusted in render settings depending on your hardware. Now the audio. So this is going to be a short and sweet segment because man, Pimax really messed up on the audio. Comfort, materials, experience are all pretty good on this headset, which it should be. Pimax doesn't sell cheap headsets and this one's no different, clocking in at 750 bucks for just the headset. So <laughs> there is no excuse for any part of this headset to not be fantastic. So what's up with this audio, Pimax? <laughs> Built-in head strap audio on a $750 PCVR headset and it sounds worse than something like a Quest 2? There is absolutely no excuse, especially when this headset's main competitor has literally the best audio solution on the market right now, that being the Valve Index, of course. If you want decent audio, you're either going to have to pay up for an upgrade from Pimax or just wear your own cans over the headset. But uh, come on, unfortunately, it really feels like audio was an afterthought for Pimax, which in my opinion, with a headset this expensive and meant for the hardcore audience, is not cool. There are essentially two ways to stimulate people's senses with a VR headset, visual, which the Pimax 5K Super does fantastically. Then there's the audio, which the Pimax 5K Super falls flatter on its face than its bass response, which is really a shame. And in case you're wondering about the microphone, ugh, here's the index microphone versus the Pimax 5K Super. Testing the microphone on the Valve Index. Testing the microphone on the Pimax 5K Super. Yikes. The head strap and build materials themselves though, pretty great. I mean, the headset feels solid. It feels like a nice piece of tech and the issues that Pimax has had for years now with shoddy build quality seems to be getting a lot better. Plus the headset itself has this coating on it that is advertised to be some new damage resistance coating, which sounds like marketing lingo, but uh, it's actually some really tough stuff. And after throwing around the headset for a bit, it's not scratched. The comfort was surprisingly good, even though the head strap feels a little wobbly and it does doesn't feel crazy heavy on the head. I know it's deceiving because the Pimax looks like a big heavy headset, but it's really not. And in terms of software, I have used old versions of Pimax software, which is currently called PyTool, something you pretty much have to be running to use this headset. And wow, the new software experience that Pimax rolled out recently has made using a Pimax so much easier. In the weeks I've been using it, I haven't had any crashes or weird performance issues. And while the software can be clunky sometimes and a little weird, it at least it works and works consistently. If there's one thing that Pimax has really improved on over the past year, it's this. So the Pimax 5K Super. It's a weird headset. It does some things so well, better than any headset out there for the price actually. It's a high refresh rate, super wide field of view, comfortable and fully usable headset, but it has its clear downsides. The audio is pretty terrible, the microphone quality sucks, and it's pretty prohibitively expensive. And Pimax doesn't exactly have the best track record in terms of customer service. But like I said, the Pimax 5K Super is a tinkerer's headset. It's a VR headset made for hardcore PC VR enthusiasts, let's be real. And honestly, if you're the kind of person that hears 120 hertz and 200 degrees FOV or 180 hertz Beat Saber and you drool, then maybe the Pimax 5K is for you. If you care about those stats over everything, then yeah, you are going to absolutely love the Pimax 5K Super, and you'll put up with the bad audio or whatever else you need to change on it. There's no other headset right now in its price range that does what this headset does. The wide field of view and enhanced immersion is badass to be honest. But if you're expecting Valve Index level or Vive Pro level of polish or Oculus level of polish, in anyway, from software to hardware to even buying the thing, you're probably going to be very disappointed. So if you're a brand new VR user, would I recommend the Pimax 5K Super to you? Uh, maybe if you're already a hardcore PC builder and you like to tinker with everything you get. Otherwise, I'd probably steer clear and try out another headset first. However, 
as an upgrade from a Valve Index, well, I've laid everything out on the table regarding what I think about this headset after using it extensively. Everything I find good and bad. And for me, the choice wasn't really clear. But for now, the Valve Index is taking a break, and I will be using the Pimax 5K Super as my primary headset. And that's a lot coming from me. I love my Valve Index. And I think at this point, you already know where you stand, and I'm not saying I'm not going back to the Index. It's just right now, I'm digging the Pimax. Don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.